Hello? Mr. Lincoln. Yeah? Are you still single? Yes. Still no immediate ties with family of any kind? I'm still an orphan, yeah. No recent achievements or advancements, career or otherwise? Yeah, nobody knows I'm alive. All right. We matched you with a partner. She can meet you at a bus station an hour west of Chicago at 1 o'clock p.m. a week from tomorrow. Is this acceptable? Sure. Details are being forwarded along with instructions. Okay. Daniel, you know you're going to have to disconnect this number. South Dakota. Not the place. Oh. It's a secret. I'll tell you when we get there. Tell me when we get there? Yeah. I don't really like surprises. Too bad. Palace. I was saving it for a special occasion. Your first night seems appropriate enough. Okay, let's go. Wait a second. Let's not do this. What are you doing? It's a contingency plan. Now you go tell the guys on the bench that you need help changing the tire. You can't do it because of your wrists, right? Then you bring them back here, and I'll run out and do it. No, I don't want to do that. Fine. Then you'll have to do it by yourself. Do you really want two drunk guys going down some street with me? I think you'll be fine. I wasn't worried about me. Why don't we just do it here? No one's going to see us here. Come on. It's the Corn Palace. You in trouble, friend? I really, really hope not.
Thank you guys. No problem, man. Alright. Did you do it? Yeah. Colonial Pine Hills welcome you. Or at least I think they do, they didn't say. We need to sleep. It's morning. Yeah. I definitely need to sleep. Hold on, baby, hold on. Take the tent on account of it's your first night and all. It's easy to set up. Thanks. Now, right, where are you gonna sleep? In the back seat. It's a good thing about working so late. You can sleep just about anywhere. But sleep, okay? We haven't even gone over the basics. The whole don't get there before midnight, never park where you're laying the tile. Ideally, no one should ever see us at all, ever. So think about where you wanna go tomorrow. I don't know if he told you this, but I really, I don't like sleeping. We really don't have a route or anything? We just have to call every few days to get budget approval, tell them where we've been so we don't cross paths with anybody. I chose the Corn Palace, so tag, you're it. Think about it. Bad dreams? No, no. I just have a, it's a, like a hard thing. Broken? Uh, a little faulty. Anyway, it just goes like crazy without warning sometimes and it doesn't really respond to good distress. Am I supposed to overexert myself? You should try to exert yourself. I might die. You'll die if you don't, I'll tell you that. All right. Eat. I'll break down the tent. Have you ever seen it before? Not this year. Did I see it this year or? Uh, not this year. You know, I've never even been outside of Illinois. So where are we going today? I don't know. Why don't you decide? 
You have to want to do this, otherwise I might as well take you home. Are the Rockies nearby? I always wanted to see them. Someone already got Aspen. How's Estes Park? Gateway to the Rockies. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> It's all right, I've been living in, uh, in Illinois for as long as I can remember. I work for different uh, nonprofits, you know, like soup kitchens, literacy centers. So I guess I'm like a, uh, a professional you know, volunteer coordinator. That sounds rewarding. Why did you stop? Uh, I don't know. I mean, things sort of fell apart a while back, and uh, I realized that I didn't have anybody in my life. OK, let's do this. But, uh, back it up, though. Let's, uh, tell me about your parents. Never knew them. Oh, uh, okay. No, it's not well, like that. I just, I was in foster care for as far back as I can remember. So I never knew them, and I don't need to. But did you have a family, like, uh, long-term care? All right, well, first I was, uh, how do you explain this? A novelty baby. You know what that is? It's like a new home for every birthday. You see, because, like, some couples, they only seem to want a baby of a certain age. And then when the kid grows out of that age, they realize that they're staring down the barrel of, you know, the rest of a life. Well, two lives, you know, theirs and his, which I guess can be, you know, one thing in theory, but it's another thing when that reality really likes, you know, clothes and food and always will. But I mean, I spent time in every cliche imaginable. Are you an optimist, Dan? Can you be a cautious optimist? How about a hopeful optimist? Okay. Good. I wouldn't want to drive to Colorado with anyone who wasn't a hopeful optimist, especially in the face of a Dickensian childhood. Yeah, and then when I was, uh, you know, 13, I moved in with this couple with a girl who was about, you know, a year older than me. So it turns out that this couple, they had two kids who died, you know, when they were young. So. So somehow, this couple, right, these parents, they found a way to get two kids that were the same age as their kids were when they died. But they also found a way, and don't ask me how, to ensure that they got kids with specific birthdays, the same exact birthdays that their kids had, but, you know, a year later to account for the time it took to find us. This is bullshit, right? It's not bullshit at all. You know, the birthdays thing is, it's important because it meant that me and this girl really felt a strange sort of connection. Does this story end with you kissing your sister? She wasn't really my sister. It was like, okay, and picture it this way, right? We were students, okay, roommates at some really inappropriate boarding school. Yeah, and this couple, I mean, they were well off enough, so they, we could afford separate bathrooms. Oh, and that, and that makes it okay. You okay. ask me, I'm telling you. I'm sorry. Go on. You have, you have the benefit of a doubt. Look, it's not... It's not as weird as it sounds. I mean, we hit it off as soon as we met. Right? She was in high school, I was in the eighth grade. We were both new, so we didn't really have anybody, but we had each other. And, you know, we started a date. And that was it. And I mean, we tried really hard to hide it from this couple that we never even really thought of as our parents anyway. And I guess we didn't try hard enough. And when they found out, it, you know, it wrecked them. What happened? Well, she turned 18, and then, you know, you no longer apply for foster care then, so the parents, they decide whether or not they want to adopt you, and I think that, you know, at this point, yeah, I think they had considered it, but now it was impossible. So she moved out, and I was not really in love with school, 
know, but I was sort of in love with her, so uh, I dropped out and moved into the city. And it was good for a while, you know? But I just got this, you know, this weird heart. And what I'm trying to say to you is that sometimes, when you don't love another person, love is, it can just be a really, really hard thing to fake. Believe me, I've tried. So, who are you? I'm Jane. All right, now I'm Dan, that's done. So, who are you? Let's hear it. No, honey, I'm just Jane. This is just what I want when I have a house. Bullshit leading up to my door. That's it, just horseshit. Straight <laughs> shit. I get the mule. Mule. Oh! Wanna try it? Getting down is gonna be <sighs> the bad part. and carve your name into one of these wooden things. No one's gonna ever see this. Someone someday is gonna come by here and see. Jay? Here you go. Yeah, for you. Horse weeds. Oh, thank you. No? I love horse weeds. You love horse weeds? <laughs> you dork. <laughs> can live like this? I think this would be great. Really? You do nothing. Exactly. Do nothing. You have very many misconceptions of me. Maybe you have misconceptions about me. I think I got you pretty much. Spot on. Oh, yeah? Oh, I think so. Don't you just look like the cat that ate the canary? <laughs> Hope you like these. It's all I eat on the road. Got some fruit, some grains, a little bit of protein. It's perfect. So, what does it make you feel? Feel anything? Well, the sandwich is fine. No, I mean, seeing the same thing the people in the covered wagon saw. If you if you hold your hand up and cover the road, you see pretty much the same thing they did. Does it make you feel something? <laughs> I guess not, no. 
I look at that and all I can think is, thank God we can go faster than them. So, why are you doing this? What do you mean? Why did you answer the ad? I mean, I don't know, I guess I just, I like the idea of being, you know, part of something bigger than myself. You know what I mean? Not being just me anymore, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, this is what I want to do, you know? To be part of something. And this is the bigger something? I mean, maybe. You know, it feels like it. Tell me, uh... Tell me about your interview. Didn't have one. What about you? Nope. Just a phone call. Yeah, I saw a, uh, a flyer in, uh, in a coffee shop. Phone pull. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, I hung it on my fridge for probably like, I don't know, like maybe two weeks. And then I got curious, you know, so I called. And uh, mostly I thought I was just gonna get, you know, some answers. That's what was going on. And I guess, you know, party always hopes that maybe there's something you could actually do. Hello, and thank you for calling. And I literally kept expecting the guy to tell me that I was now entering the Twilight Zone. Wait, would he ask you something really strange? What was your earliest disappointment? No, I mean, I mean, not really, you know, anything out of the ordinary. They were mostly, like, personal questions, you know, like the kind of thing it's, it's a little hard to, you know, lie about. What single factor has most significantly contributed to your aspirations? You know, and at the time, I thought there was some sort of, uh, you know, like a complex matrix to sort of, you know, assess my suitability, but I don't know. Are you familiar with the Troms uh, files? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard not to be. I do live in a city. Yeah, but I mean, they're popping up everywhere. You know, they're not just in major U.S. cities anymore. There's one in uh, Vancouver, right? And I heard a guy say there's one in Panama, Cuba, they got one. You know, so we all seen them. We wondered what they meant. Well, that's why I'm out here. I'm not at liberty to discuss any specifics vis-a-vis -vis larger goals. I can divulge that I represent an organization for whom the tiles are an important project. We are currently aiding in the recruitment of new members for the ground team. Look, I can tell you think I know something about the tiles, but, uh... There was some explanatory brochure. My copy hasn't arrived yet. I don't, I don't know any more than you do. You sure about that? Yeah. All right. Well, come on, I mean, there, there has to be some type of a meaning to the message. You know, and the first part, okay, break down the first part for a second, right? The first part is a riddle. And I remember from looking at the tile in Chicago, uh, it said, what's the difference between uh, life's time card and a child-estimated fear? That's it, so there has to be some sort of an answer. Well, there's an answer that I, I worked it out. Uh, the two phrases, the child-estimated fear and life's time card, have all the same letters, except the first one contains five more. Uh, e and A, a T and H and a D. So the answer is D, E, A, T, and H. So the top layer is black and white linoleum. And below that is a combination of plain linoleum and this crack filling stuff they use for pavement. The adhesive is really just there for the first few days, so you know, once it's there, the tile's not going anywhere, I promise. But it's important to make sure you, you position the thing so that the tires hit it, because that, that's what drives it into the pavement. And it just melts into the street. I like a fossil. It's weird, I know, it's some sort of combination of the weight of the tires and the crack filling stuff. So what should we put on the border? They give us some freedom there. Some people like to use quotes, 
lyrics, political and ideas. I like to use poetry, but unless you have a better idea. Full fathom five, thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. It's a tempest. I know what it is. And it's an awfully good idea. Well, come on, you gotta help me cut out this stuff for a vision thing. It's really tough stuff, I'm sorry. Oh my god. It's really hard, look. Okay. <laughs> thing is like if you really you sit and you think about being dead forever you know like you, you can you have an idea in your head of what that is but sometimes when you stop and you close your eyes and you really think about that like think about like just forever and how long that goes on for I mean if, if you had if everything lasted forever you wouldn't appreciate it I think you're right. Or so right. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> Don't distract me with the rocks. Alright, ready? Two, two, oh no. <laughs> Shit, man, I'm bad. <laughs> Don't you feel just a little bit safer around water? A little more comfortable? No? Where do you feel comfortable? I like the desert. There's a desert, yeah? Yeah. My butt's cold. My ass is freezing. No! Oh. Feeling patriotic? Doing a star for every state I've laid a tile in. Don't look so impressed. You can get most of New England in one night. And I want all the stars.
So have you seen the tile in Chicago? Yeah, and there's a bar. Well, actually, it's a, like a cocktail lounge. They say it was, you know, Al Capone? They say it was his favorite place. And uh, there's one right outside of there. I mean, I worked at a, at a shelter nearby, and I walked past her every day. And I didn't see it at first. And one day it was just, it was there. You know, I was walking down the street. And uh, I step into the street and my foot touches something. You know, it doesn't really feel like street. And I got stuck there for about like 15 minutes, just reading it, touching it, feeling it over and over. When I lost you, I didn't lose your memory. When the people have Why do you think they mean so much to people? Who says they mean so many people? Well, I mean, they mean something to me. They must mean something to you if you're here. And they must mean something to somebody else or else it would have never made the news. And the tiles are interesting because ambiguity is interesting. Nobody knows how it got there, so we we'll fill it with an exciting, shadowy mystery. I had a friend whose grandfather used to put on magic shows at Christmas for her and all her cousins. And she told me she hated it until one year, he uh, let her be the magician's assistant. And after he made her swear up and down not to tell little ones the secrets, she said it was the most fulfilling, happy experience she'd ever had. Yeah, I get that, but I think that it is something no, it's not just the mystery. I think it has something to do with the message. I mean, obviously, there's something comforting in it. Right? I mean, death is the one fear that we all have in common, right? And the tiles are about death. The dead die backwards, Trump, so polar circle, whatever that is, they can come back. Do you even know what Trump so is? No. It's a town in Norway. The land of the midnight sun. That's what polar circle means. It's just Norwegian for Arctic circle. Tromsø is the seventh largest city in Norway. It's not as big as Trondheim, but bigger than Tonsberg. It has the largest number of wooden houses in all of northern Norway. It has a busy electronic music scene. And I haven't checked, but I can virtually guarantee that nobody in that town is experimenting successfully or otherwise in resurrection. Look, I, I, I think it's good that you believe in what we're doing. I mean, I, I think what we're doing is great. It brings some whimsy back into the picture. I just, I just don't think you should put any more meaning into it than, than it has. Do you notice anything else about the tiles in Chicago? Uh, I think there was some poetry, maybe from T.S. Eliot. I think, yeah, it was T.S. Eliot. Phlebas the Phoenician, a fortnight dead, forgot the cry of the gulls and the deep sea swell and the profit and the loss. Current under sea, picked his bones and whispers. As he rose and fell, he passed the stages of his age and youth, entering the whirlpool. Hey. 
Hey, how's it going? Uh, what's going on here? Uh, nothing. She's just having a. She just needs a moment to herself. She has a, a friend of hers got hit by uh, by a car. He's riding his bike up this road, and she's kind of just trying to, you know, get past it. A little cathartic moment, you know. We're all right, really, but we don't want any other cars stopping because it could be a little, you know, dangerous for her. So really, we, we appreciate you checking in on us. All right. How are you doing? Be careful. Be careful. I'm sorry, we didn't mean to startle you. Yeah, be careful out here. All right. They do. <laughs> I bet they do. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> what was that? It was a contingency plan. How does a day off sound? Early? Of course. Always take one day off a week for your mental health. OK. Maybe I'll even uh, let you take me out to dinner. I'd like that. But I have no money. Or credit cards, or electronic devices, or identification, or anything outside of a storage unit in Humboldt Park. It's OK. We'll uh, charge it to them. like Jane. You're a dog, number one. <laughs> you shed, number two. <laughs> and you're a little bit skittish. Get that in there. And get your eyeball in your mouth. If you could have lived in like any other time, what would it be? Any other time? Yeah. I would live in I would live in, I don't know, probably like the, I would like to ride in a wagon and stuff, be like a miner. Really? Back in the day, yeah, like a, what do they call those guys? Prospector. Prospector. See? Wow, that actually is pretty good. Nice. I haven't said one lie to you. Yeah? Oh, once I said a half lie. That was it. You've, come on, you've said some lies to me. Haven't you? I have not lied to you. What do you think about? Without it coming out wrong. I think you're the most beautiful girl that ever really paid attention to me. And I know that you're only paying attention to me because of our situation, but. And that's why I would like to know just, you know, a little bit more. I don't know what to say to you. I think you're a whole lot of talk.
Listen, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I should have knocked louder. <laughs> sure, whatever. I'll go get the table. I have to call ground control. Okay. Oh, who answers there? What will you talk about? I'm just gonna tell them what towns we hit, that's it. That's all? That's all. Okay. All right, is there anything else I can do? Get out of here! Are you sure? Yes. Right, table for two? Yes! Okay, so. <laughs> Karen LaTulip, 04261780. What? Well, what did I say? Well, nothing. Just thank you for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. That's it. I promise, that's all. You think I was up there long enough for some sort of a secret transmission? Something in code? Hey. Why do you need to believe in this so badly? It's just, you know, it's just giving people something to wonder about. It's a... It's a joke, a caper. That's it, so I just, you know, break up the monotony of life. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it, it's a, it's a joke to you? Who in their right mind will go through all this trouble to do all of this stuff if it was just a there's joke? There's not, there's just, I don't know, I mean, there's like, I just always assumed it was some Eccentric billionaire, you know, probably a little bit insane. You know, Wizard of Oz. Look, I don't know any more about this than you do. I, I've just been doing it for longer. That's it. Bored, sort of like Howard Hughes up in his, I don't know, Xanadu temple. I'll give you one more chance. Why do you have to believe in this so much? Because, because I don't, I don't believe in anything else. Because, you know, they're telling me something that I want to believe is true. You know, if there could be anything else, then maybe everybody ends up all right and so will I. I mean, I've never felt all right, you know? I always felt like, um, I don't know, like a, a jigsaw piece from the wrong puzzle. Does that make sense to you? You feel like a puzzle piece? Well, I feel, I don't know, maybe we're all just pieces, you know? Pieces from different puzzles, random ones, and there's no point in figuring it out at all. Well, all I know is that they give me a chance at making me not feel that way anymore. Feel like a lot of puzzle pieces or just one puzzle piece? You know what I mean. You know, I wish I didn't. I mean, maybe we're all just 
And then we don't know what the picture is. <laughs> Maybe. I think you're on to something there. Yeah? Yeah, I do. As far as I go, you're gonna have to come the rest of the way. <sighs> Fine. Ever tell me you're in love with me? Ever. And what if it were true? That would be too bad. We're giving people something to believe in. Maybe. But I think at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to them whether or not they wanna believe it. What if... What if we gave them something to believe in without needing to? What if we let them in on the secret without keeping it from them? Just. But what's the secret? Do you want to go to the Grand Canyon? Really? Yeah. Yeah, always. I've never been there. Okay. Is it close? Yeah. Yeah? I can <laughs> five more minutes. Let's go. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> Come on. All right. I'm terrified of heights. I love that. I really do. You like heights? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like, like, sort of that tingly sensation. Really? Yeah. You know? No, I really don't. Why? I don't know, I always feel like something's gonna happen and I'm gonna just heave myself over the edge. I'll push you don't, off. Don't, please, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> you jumped so I will bad. Leave you here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. You're forgiven. Yeah? Mm hmm. Are you gonna kiss me? You wanna kiss me? You look like you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it now, huh? No. I'm gonna exfoliate and film <laughs> That works. Yeah. It's like a shoe mat. <laughs> you think my face is dirty? It looks like a shoe. <laughs> okay. Well, like a like a nice shoe or like a like a hiking boot. Like a like a big motorcycle boot. My face looks like a motorcycle boot. Yeah, sometimes. What? In a certain light, it all depends. What? You look like a strappy sandal. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I look like a motorcycle boot, if my face looks like a motorcycle no, boot. You got a beautiful face. Shut up. Yeah? I feel like this is coming towards us. I'm distracting you from this? I'm distracting you from all of this. Right. 
yes. We should go to Phoenix today. I've been wanting to go there. I'm not wanting to, but uh, I think we should go. Uh, why didn't you say something earlier, Remy? We could have really been there days ago. You know, I've been aiming us there since we got to Colorado. Really? Thanks for mentioning it. Look, Danny, if you wanted to travel with someone who would access to her every thought you should have gotten in someone else's car in Illinois. Who's Carol Tulip? I don't know. I, I don't like her name. I heard you say the name the other night on the phone. I told you not to listen to that call. You know what? You should have given me just a little bit more time to get down the hallway before you decided. Giving you more time? I was supposed to know you're like snooping by my door. I, I told you to go down. By your door. I left your room. I was standing right there. Who is it? Is it you? So I have an alias. You have an alias. Which one is it, or is it both? What, <laughs> what does it matter? It matters to me. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm a little bit sick of this because every time you ask me something, I'm pretty forward with it. I mean, you know mostly everything about me. You know the blueprints and stuff. Straight and narrow way. Roll on, roll on, roll on. Little doggies, roll on, roll on. Roll on, roll on, roll on. Little doggies, roll on. This is where we're lining it. Outside. Yep. Hey, let's go. Alright, let's go. You know, I normally support you 100 percent but I thought that we were supposed to kind of, you know, stay out of areas where uh, people might see us. If you want to lay a tile across town, be my guest. This one's going here. Alright. Oh, I just need to get myself time. I'll be better tomorrow. I'll get a fresh start. Alright. What's she doing over there? Um, just, uh, her friend died about, like, uh, like a year ago or three years. He got hit by a bike, and uh, he was, you know, and, and, and so she's just paying her respects. Who's this? What's going on? Nothing. We were doing something, and we're leaving. We're done. Are we leaving? No, we're not leaving. You stayed. Yeah. You know, I thought you might have stayed, but I didn't think you'd stay here. What's going on? Can you stop asking what's going on, please? <laughs> Why did you come Nothing's back? I still need to get Arizona. Oh, oh, and this is my replacement, huh? You know what? Screw you. No, don't, don't intellectualize it. Don't make a narrative of it. No, I'm not making a narrative. What are you talking about? You've got oh, to I stop. To Fine, I'll stop. Fuck you. I'm not your fucking schoolgirl. You know what? Have fun with him. Watch his nose. It crinkles when he's lying. That's his tell. That's a tick. That's really sad. Yeah, have fun together. Come on, Dan, let's go. What's happening to him? I don't know. Come on. What the hell? Come on. What the? 
Just get. I'm right here. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Just breathe. Just try to breathe. Okay. Look. Okay. Hey. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, we're gonna we'll go home. We'll go home, okay? All right, what was that? Huh, who was he? You know everything you need to know is a footnote, not a story worth telling. All right, but why won't you just tell me any story? Anything, one thing. <sighs> Do you remember the one about my friend? The, my friend with the magician grandfather? Yes. I'll tell you a story about her, if you want. Okay. She's not around anymore, so she won't mind. Well, what was she like? She likes fire. Not like an arsonist does, but, you know, like, the way it jumped, the, the warmth, the glow. Where did she live? In a very nice neighborhood. She lived in this sort of house where family could go an entire weekend without seeing each other. You know, it was like a house, not a home. What, there wasn't any love in the house? No, the parents loved the children, it's just kind of love that you have to give when you haven't been given any love, you know? I think so. And when that's the kind of love a girl gets, the kind of love she has to give is bound to have a few kinks in it. So what was her love like? It was big. That was a problem. And sometimes that's wonderful, but it also meant that there were lengthy periods when being high was normal and sober was hell. It was a rough few years, and at the end of it, she was pregnant. And when she decided not to keep the baby, all that matters is she knew, she really knew that she couldn't be this child's mother. And that made it all the more challenging when her parents told her it wasn't her decision at all. From the moment she told them, it was very clear that she would be raising this child, that the least she could do if she got pregnant was act like she meant to be. So she had the child and he was a boy, incidentally. when she had decided not to keep her son, her love for him dried up. And for all those months he grew in her, she couldn't find her love for him and it scared her so damn much. But he was born and he was absolutely everything to her. 
he brought enough love to the table to make her want to forget she'd ever question her ability to love him. I'm so tired. I've, it's been a really long night. It was like a first breath of air after being sure you'd drown. And that was so perfect. It's, its timing was so symmetrical because what happened next, I mean, had to confirm her belief in some higher power, even if that higher power was at the very least deeply ambivalent about her and everyone she knew. I, I mentioned she liked fire. <laughs> and that's appropriate because everything that happened next was fire. She walked out of the room and when she walked back, she was alone. He was there, but still. And she didn't scream because that's what people do. And she was made of fire now. And so she walked into the desert and the footsteps she left behind were on fire too. At least that was how she saw it. something you can't even describe? Anybody can describe this. Was it the, can you tell me the picture's complete? Puzzle's complete? And as far as I'm concerned, you're alone in the desert with a virtual stranger. Then what should I be doing? I'm sorry, I just... No, what should I be doing? You know, we could give, I don't know, we could come up with something better, something more amazing. What are we doing? Where are we going? I don't know. You tell me. You pick. I don't care. You decide. I picked the last time. Didn't I pick the last time? I did. Fine. You decide. How about the four corners? That sounds lovely. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do that. What's the four corners? I don't know. What are the four corners? What are the four... It's where, it's where, it's where <laughs> the four states meet at right angles. What four states? Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. West of her, there's a place I know 
never have been, but I'd like to go. Tell me something, Somewhere Drew. up there, I believe in me. And west of her is I where I'd like to see. That I might be falling in love with you. West of her, there's another place. Sunshine you can't say you think you're falling in love with someone. Love is an absolute. Falls on another sea. You can love someone a little or a lot, but and if you only think you're falling in love with them, then you're not in love with them. Nothing personal. I, I'm sorry. Come on, Danny, tell me something true. Just tried out running you. No, I don't believe that you believe you don't believe in anything. Everything that catches up has come to pass. I mean, you. You believe in more than you know you do. One inside my head. Ended up out running myself. You believe in something, you just you just don't know. You just don't know it. If you need to go lay that tile, I can't go with you. What do you mean you can't go with me? Done. I can't keep doing this. If you want to spread something together, something else, I will. I will come up with something. I'll, I'll spread it all over the world. But I'm done. I can't. I can't spread a riddle on an empty promise. You've been saying this from the beginning, but it's not empty. Nothing about this is empty. Then tell me specifically what it means. Right, see? Anticlimax, right? Mr. Lincoln.
This is what you wanted me to do, huh? This is what you left me to do by myself. This is horseshit in fucking no name town. Why you keep stepping on my toes all the time? Of course, that's your business. I'm a good loser. I like a good loser. Of course, I like any kind of a loser better than a winner.
Hello? What's in that bag? What do you want to know? What's in the bag? Secrets. Tell me the secret. I'm really good at keeping secrets. All right. You look like a guy I could trust on a level with you. The secret is, I think, that everybody ends up all right. And so will you. Oh. Oh, okay. That's kind of a stupid secret. Hey, uh, excuse me. This is gonna sound really bad and weird. I'm sorry. I normally don't do this to people because I, I hate it when they do it to me, but <laughs> okay. I have to make just a small phone call, like two seconds. Yeah, you need to use my phone. That's right, I don't, I don't have my phone. Yeah, no, it's no problem here. It's just important. Hello? What's happening in Tromso? And when is it gonna happen? Uh, uh, first, um, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, how does our message make you feel? I don't think that matters anymore. Just tell me specifically what is going to happen in Norway. Uh, that's very complicated. Um, uh, there are... Uh, there... Well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be complicated at all. Just tell me one thing. Anything. Just one small thing. You know that I don't know. Okay. Listen, I left the... I left the car next to the Gibson Guitar Factory in Memphis. What? And it isn't locked, so you're gonna want to send someone soon, this okay? This is highly unusual. Hello? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. What's happening in Tromso? You know what? I don't think anything's happening in Tromso. Maybe like electronic music. Okay. Nothing too big. Listen, is there a, is there a hotel somewhere in, in either oh, direction? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one like a block that way. So it's in walking distance? Yeah, I think it's like a motel. It's like 60 bucks a night or something. 60 bucks a night. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. All right, how about coffee? Is there is there a, a coffee yeah, place? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get coffee right now, actually. You, you You're really going help? to get coffee? Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah? Yeah, come on. It's not weird or anything? No, no. Am I creeping you out? <laughs> no, not, I'm not yet. I'm not normally like this. Normally I'm. No, yeah. Clean. You look a little uh, disheveled. Not gonna lie. Do I look a little mangy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Daniel, we received a very distressing call from this number. I think we need to speak about your behavior. Uh, moving company. They said that they're going out to the storage unit today and then my stuff should be ready by the end of the week. You'll get this job and then you'll get a big promotion. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get out of my place. And then you'll get out of my hair. Get out of your hair? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't think you can handle your hair with me out of it. You're right. I'd shave it off in the morning. <laughs> What are you thinking about? Puzzle pieces. Why are you thinking about puzzle pieces? Because sometimes I feel like, I don't know, I'm just from the wrong puzzle. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and somebody told me once that maybe it's because we just don't know what the big picture is of. No, but I don't know. 
I don't know if that's true. It doesn't really seem quite right to me, you know? I think that maybe in the end, I'm, you know, more like a title. Or like a, I don't know, like a tiny point in a big mosaic. Yeah? Yeah, and you're one. And so is everyone I've ever known, or, you know, more loved. And, you know, it's up to us whether our picture is a beautiful one, you know, or an ugly one, if that's what you're into. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there have been times when I've known my picture was was happening in the moment, and it was, you know, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm starting to realize that, you know, I'm the one who gets to decide where my tiles lie. Well, that's very philosophical. Is it philosophical? Mm -hmm. I thought so. That's why they call me Spinoza, you know that, right? Nobody calls you that. They don't? No. Mm -mm. Well, you could be the first. Mm. All right. I'm going. Good luck, Spinoza. Thank you. Like my brothers always say, best advice before a big game, mm -hmm. win. Win. <laughs> yeah, so get the job, okay? okay? Just don't exert yourself too much. I want you around for a long time. Why, nefarious purposes? Uh, yeah. I can see sure. it. Sure. I see how you work. Mm -hmm. You know, I am trying to exert myself at least once a day these days. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good. So, uh, so you want to get your exertion out of the way early today? Do I? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, yeah. I gotta go. Why no. do you always do this to me? As <laughs> no. soon as I'm ready to walk out the door, this is what happens. This is five minutes. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. broke me before, now I can't go. <laughs> to think about, I guess. Yeah, I guess so.
she would find